The John Morris Show, episode 95. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... Hey there, my name's John Morris. I'm a former U.S. Army veteran turned freelance web developer. And my goal for you at this podcast is twofold. First, I want to help you learn how to code. Second, I want to help you turn that code into a full-time living. Because if you're like me, what you want is the freedom, the satisfaction, and the income that you get from being a high-profile web developer. So if that's you, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube so you never miss an episode. You can find all my past episodes and get subscribed at johnmorrisonline.com slash John. Morris show. Also, as you get value from the show, consider becoming a supporting listener on Patreon because you'll help keep the show free for everyone and you'll get access to exclusive courses, source code, and Q&A sessions available only to supporting listeners. Visit johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, to become a supporting listener. All right, let's get into this episode. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the John Morris Show, johnmorrisonline.com. I am your host, John Morris. Glad to be back with you after a long Memorial Day weekend. Just got back in town yesterday, Tuesday, if you're listening to this as soon as it came out. And spent some time over in Iowa. Most A lot of my wife's family is from, from there, so went over, made the rounds. As always, it feels like feels like you need a day off after, you need like a vacation day after your vacation. It's <laughs> kind of how I'm feeling today, but I wanted to get this episode out to you today. It was, you know, going around, seeing family, uh, being able to take a step back, had a lot of my mind. And of course, my mind kind of tends to drift towards you guys and towards uh, you guys and gals and, uh, you know, what we're doing here and, and web development and so forth. So kind of in that vein today, I wanted to talk to you about surviving the next 10 years in technology. And I think that that's going to be a thing. You know, you may not, when you hear that, you may not immediately think, oh, well, hey, what do you mean survive the next 10 years? But I do think that is going to become a thing. Now, here's here's kind of the crux of this. So, if you can you think back and can you even remember what life was like just 10 years ago you know 10 years is really not all that long in the grand scheme of things and so that was 2006 so can you think back and remember what things were like now i kind of can i kind of remember that time period i was just getting back i was in the military at the time you know, I had been back for a little bit from serving over in Iraq. And so, you know, that was kind of a time in my life that had, <laughs> you know, there's a lot going on and so a lot of significance. So I, I do kind of remember it, but it's crazy to think about all the stuff that exists now that didn't exist then. So for example, in 2006, the first iPhone, the very first iPhone, the thing that revolutionized the industry and has led to everything that we kind of almost take for granted today, that first iPhone wouldn't be launched for another year yet in 2006. So the iPhone and really smartphones and tablets and everything in terms of technology that we know today didn't even exist. And we were all probably walking around ooing and awing at the Razor. You remember that little flip phone Razor? I remember I had one. It was like the coolest phone at the time. And the the really cool thing about it, I was just, it was funny. This comes up because I was talking with my brother-in-law uh, over the weekend about this. Uh, we got into kind of a deep technology discussion and we're talking about this. And this is part of the reason why this came up. But we we're kind of laughing at the, the fact that we oohed and awed over this razor because it had a camera on it. And, and it was like he said, the camera wasn't even that great. It was a really crappy camera, but everybody had to have this phone because it had a camera on it. 
right? So we're all walking and ooing on at that, or we were wearing our thumbs out on the Blackberry. I don't, I don't know if 2006 Blackberries were a thing quite yet then, but I know it wasn't too long after that when the Blackberries we kind of had a little surge and then, of course, fell off after that. So these were all the things that were kind of going on back then. There was no node. There was no bootstrap. It'd still be another four years before Ethan Marcotte wrote his web-altering article on a list of part called Responsive Web Design where he kind of laid out the case for responsive web design and really changed the industry and made it what it is today in a sense. So that would still be another four years before he did that. And back then, PHP 4 was still the norm. Now, there were some releases of PHP 5, but you know if you've probably... If you didn't go through it from the switch from PHP 4 to PHP 5, you're seeing it now with PHP 5 to PHP 7 that the industry and and web hosts are a little slow to adopt those sorts of things. So PHP 4 was still really the norm back then. And that was all just 10 years ago, really not that long ago. And so I believe that those of us that have been alive for all of this and even the people who were maybe born during that time period who might be listening to this, we tend to drastically underestimate what is really happening and going on and just how rapidly things are changing because we really don't get much time to sit back and look and look back just a few years and see what's all all has changed because we're so caught up with all the changes that are happening right in front of us. And, And so I think we just drastically underestimate how quickly things are changing and how quickly they're going to change in the future. And if you're not careful, as someone in a technology industry, which is what you are in or want to be in, you can get swept away. Now, I was just a wee little code pup back then, and I got washed, I got completely washed away by the Web 2.0 movement. I don't know if you're around for that, but that was a kind of the shift from static websites to more dynamic websites like we see today. It was really kind of the the birth of PHP and you know maybe some of the JavaScript stuff and so forth and the dynamic web that we have today. I got completely obliterated by that. I lost my entire web design business. All the work that I'd put into it, the blood, sweat, the tears, the late nights, the gray hair, the all the hair I had pulled out, <laughs> all for nothing because I didn't pay attention to what was happening. And Web 2.0 was just, in my opinion, a minor blip compared to the seismic shifts that are coming. So I want you to think about this. Think back to everything that has changed in the last 10 years. Everything I've mentioned, everything I haven't mentioned, everything that you can think of, everything that has changed in the last 10 years. Now flip that around and try to imagine everything that's going to change in the next 10. And then add on top of that, the fact that technology tends to advance exponentially. So it progresses faster and faster. So the next 10 years will advance even faster than the last 10, which by the way, means you don't have time to mess around with all of this. So I don't think any of us can really know what things are going to look like 10 years from now. But what I do know is what I learned with Web 2.0 and what I've seen in this industry ever since is that these kinds of changes and this kind of growth and rapid progress represents a massive opportunity for those of us that can keep our head up, keep our head above water. and. Now and again, take a step back, pay attention to what's going on, and be able to adapt quickly. And that's the point of why I bring this all up, is the ability to adapt quickly. And I think there are some key things that you need to be able to do to adapt quickly. One is just to simply have awareness, right? And that's why I keep saying pay attention, keep your head up is to to actually think about these things. Spend some time taking a look back and taking a look around and seeing what's going on to, to create a sense of awareness of what's really happening 
of what's really going on right now and just how quickly things are changing. And to not get too narrow-minded and locked in on a certain worldview or approach to this whole web development and technology thing to where you start investing all of your time when all this in, in one thing, when all the signs are there, that that one thing might not be around in the next five or 10 years. Okay, now, I don't know that we can all, I can sit here and tell you what all those things are. I mean, it, it, it's tough, but as time goes along, there will be signs and you have to be able to see them. So that's the first thing is awareness. The second part is the adapt, adapting part. And I believe at my core, just fundamentally who I am, the ability to learn things quickly is the key to adaptation in this kind of knowledge economy that we're in. You have to be able to learn quickly. And there are things that you can do. Learning quickly is not something you're just born with. There are things that you can do. You can learn to learn quickly. You know, I I harp on this all the time. You know, I always say, find people who, you know, or find training that is integrated. Having integrated training is huge. That's why I constantly recommend Udemy courses because they're taught by one instructor. They've thought through, they've been through the whole thing. They've thought through it all. And they give you a, they give you kind of an integrated course that, that all goes together. Now you got to find good courses. Don't get me wrong. There have to be good courses. But when you can do that, that's much better than if you were to go and find out all those same trainings or all those same videos, but by, you know, 20 different people on YouTube. I love YouTube, don't get me wrong, but that one whole integrated course specifically put together to teach you a set of skills is much better than kind of a hodgepodge of stuff put together. So that's the first thing. Second thing is building real things while you learn. So that's why I constantly tell people, start taking clients. Yes, you could build your own little projects, but you never really get a good sense of what it's like to work with a client, meet deadlines, you know, be able to communicate and go back and forth and do all the things that you're going to need to be able to do career wise. So I always tell people to take on clients sooner rather than later. Right. And then the third thing is a mentor. And and that can often be the hardest one, you know, for a lot of people. Again, that's why I like the Udemy courses because you oftentimes get access to those instructors in those courses and they become kind of like a mentor. There's also code mentor. You know, I tried to be a bit of a virtual mentor through this show. There, there, there's things, there's alternative ways that you can find mentors outside of just, you know, hiring someone one on one to to be your mentor. Another good way is to take a job that maybe doesn't exactly what you want to do doesn't necessarily pay what you you want to make however there's somebody that works there that would be in charge of you that you feel would be a good mentor for you that's also a a really great option as well all right so those are some things that you can do that then once you see a change happening allow yourself to learn very very quickly integrated training finding a mentor and then building real things with real clients right so Again, and I think these are things are going to become very, very important in the next 10 years. And again, representing massive opportunity for people who really get serious about this and invest in their career, both time, effort, and money, and invest now. You can set yourself up for when these shifts come. So I think we're going to see a lot of separation in the next 10 years between those who want to be developers, coders in technology, but aren't willing to put in the time and the effort, are willing to do the things necessary in order to go from a wannabe to someone who is. So you're going to see a grand separation between them and then those who do get serious and do whatever it takes to make this career. I think those people will start to take more and more market share and really kind of squeeze out uh, a lot of, I guess, the wannabes that you might see out there right now who are maybe getting some business and so forth, but really haven't seriously invested uh, into their career. So my advice to you <laughs> is to think all of this through and make sure that you're on the right side of that separation. 
All right, as always, I want to give a big shout out to all of my supporters over on Patreon. Uh, in case you don't know, I just uploaded a new template for those of you at the freelance template level. I think I'm going to show you it here in just a minute if you're watching over on YouTube, but I think it's really cool. If you want to check it out, go over to johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. There's some pictures there, but I just uploaded this new te uh, template there, uh, freelance template that you want to check out. Also, PHP 101 will be live in the next day or so for those of you at the exclusive courses level or higher. And you've probably, if you, again, if you're a Patreon supporter, you've probably already seen all the source code from all the tech tutorials in May that's up and live already on, on the site there. So if you're a Patreon supporter listening to this, be sure to jump over and make sure you get access to all your goodies. I put all that stuff up there for you guys to say thank you for supporting the show. So make sure that you get on over there and check that stuff out. And as always, thank you again very, very much. For the rest of you, if you're not yet a Patreon supporter, you might consider doing that. You'll get access to all the goodies I just mentioned. You can learn more about support, becoming a supporting listener at johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. Like I said, if you're interested in the freelance template that I just uh, put up and you're lis listening to this on YouTube, I'm going to flash up here is what this month's freelance template looks like. So again, this is based off the 12 step, you know, freelance profile uh, sales letter that I talked about a few videos back. If you want to check out that video, johnmorrisonline.com slash YouTube, um, you'll see it in the, in the list of the latest videos there. You can check it out. All right, so this, again, new template based on that. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I like it quite a bit. Uh, hopefully you do as well. Again, johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon if you want access to that. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.